Hey guys, YouTube World Hunter here. Alright, and now here I am as I continue on reviewing the Terminator movies. And now here I am with a review for Terminator 2 Judgment Day. So, yeah, just like the first Terminator film, I mean, this film is just an absolute classic. And, yeah, there are a lot of people that do uh, regard this one as being the best in the series. And I would definitely agree. I mean, yeah, this is definitely my favorite Terminator movie, and I do think that it is better than the first one. I mean, I've watched this one, like, just so many times. I mean, I've just... Yeah, I've honestly, like, seen this one a lot more than I have the first one. So, yeah, despite the fact that both films really are, like, just absolutely phenomenal, I do think that this one, like I said, is the better one. And it is also just a lot more watchable. I mean, I do know, like, quite a lot of people that have, like, watched this one a lot more than they have the first one. I even know some people that haven't even watched the first one at all, but have seen this one a whole bunch of times. So, yeah, this I think that this one really is, like, how a lot of people really be were introduced to uh, the Terminator series, and myself included. I actually did watch this one before I ever did see the first one, but yeah, this film is just an absolute classic. I mean, yeah, just like I said before, I mean, I really do think the first two Terminator films really are James Cameron's best works, and yeah, and especially this one, I do think that overall this is James Cameron's best film ever. I mean, yeah, I have just really always loved this film. I mean, yeah, like I said, I've seen it like just so many times, and yeah, it is just, yeah, I never get tired of it. I mean, it is just like an absolute classic. And it is a really, like, good continuation of the events of the first Terminator film. So, now, the premise of this film, it basically is, is a very similar premise to the first film. So, in this one, it's once again how, um, how, uh, Skynet ends up sending a Terminator back in time to change history, but rather... Like, like how the first film did, where it's sending the uh, Terminator back in time to uh, assassinate Sarah, so John is never even born. Now, this time, the Terminator is sent back in time to when John was a child, and now they're actually, like, targeting John. So, yeah. And, of course, like, as I've just said, in this film, this film actually does feature uh, John Connor in it. Yeah, the first film, of course, was before John was born, but this time, yeah, John is a character in the film. So, yeah. Yeah. And, of course, in this film, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Linda Hamilton do reprise their roles, and they're, once again, just so great. I mean, yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger, of course, like, this time, rather than the antagonist, he's the protagonist. This, yeah, and he's just, like, really great in this film. And, yeah, he really does go through, like, more of a character arc this time around than he did in the first film. Because, yeah, in this film now with the Terminator Raider being, like, a protagonist, and he really is, like, the protector of John in this film, he, if he really, like, goes through, like, a, a character arc in this film where he, like, as he is, like, protecting John, he does, like, learn stuff throughout the film. Like, he learns how to really, like, talk to blend in with the crowds, and he really just, like, does, <clears throat> does learn, like, other stuff throughout the film as well. So, yeah, and, yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he's just was phenomenal once again as the Terminator. And Linda Hamilton, once again, she's just awesome as Sarah Connor. And, yeah, I, they really did make her, like, a much more awesome character in uh, this film than they did the first. Because, well, in the first, how she was still, like, a really good character, there wasn't, wasn't a whole lot that she did. And here we just, like, see her just do, like, so much more stuff. I mean, she takes out people, and, yeah, we see her in action shooting. And, yeah, we just, like, see her, like, just be a very awesome character in this film. Yeah, and also, of course, like, we do have some, uh, new actors in this film as well. Of course, so we have, uh, there's Edward Furlong as John Connor, and he's really good in the film. Um, yeah, and as well as, uh, Robert Patrick as the T-1000. He's, uh, really great in the film as well. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, this film, like, was kind of like the start of Robert Patrick really being cast as a villain in quite a few films, because I have seen quite a few films with Robert Patrick where he is actually the villain in the movies. So, yeah, I guess, like, this just started the trend of casting Robert Patrick as the villain in the movies, yeah. But, yeah, the cast in this film are overall pretty good.
And yeah, and yeah, this film also just has so many great scenes. I mean, yeah, the uh, T-1000 chase scenes in this film, they're really great. The fight scenes are really good. The scene where Sarah does escape from the uh, hospital is really good. The... The shootouts with the police are really good, just, yeah, what can, I mean, what scenes in this film really aren't really good, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, there are, of course, like, a whole lot of great scenes in the film as well, so, I mean, what is there to really, that, that there, I mean, what else can you really say about the film, I mean, it is just, like, an absolute classic, and just an absolutely phenomenal film, I once again give this film a solid four stars out of four, I mean, I just have always loved this film, and it is just an absolute classic so yeah though well, i do know that this film also did like when it came to like dvd and blu-ray it did like also have like an extended cut of the film where it did have some more scenes in it like there was a scene there's a scene in the extended cut where apparently kyle does actually appear i guess it's through like a dream or something that sarah is having <coughs> it yeah there's also like an alternate ending to the movie where uh her, it just, like, shows the light that Sarah and John now have, now that the events with the Terminator have now been, uh, rewritten. Yeah, there's also, like, a scene, like, after, like, they escape from the T-1000, after they, say, rescue Sarah from the hospital, as Sarah does try to, uh, destroy the Terminator CPU, but John stops her from doing it, so yeah. So, yeah, I do know that there is, like, an extended cut of this film that really does have more scenes, but yeah, this film, this, this review, this is just gonna be for the theatrical cut of the film. So, yeah, but yeah, like I said, just a really, really be a great, outstanding masterpiece. So, yeah, and this really is, like, one of my favorite movies ever. So, yeah, like I said, a solid four stars out of four. All right. So, yeah, let me just get into the premise of the movie. Nah. So, as the film opens up, it once again opens up in uh, 2029, and it actually does show that uh, war that Kyle was uh, talking to Sarah about out in the first film. It does, like, they do show some of it in the opening of this film, and it does show that John is leading the, uh, the uh, resistance against the, uh, the Skynet. Yeah, and it has some narration from Sarah just talking about like how the how the um the Skynet and the res and the resistance are battling. Yeah, she's pretty much talking about like what Kyle said to her in the first film and she's saying how um the uh the resistance is led by her son John. Uh, and she does mention how the Skynet sent two Terminators back in time. One sent in 1984 to target her before John was born. And then she says another one and was sent back in time to when John was a child to target him. And then she also says that um, the Resistance also sent and a warrior back in time as a protector for John. And she was then just like uh, talking about it was all down to whoever got him first. Yeah. And then it just showed the opening credits. It's, and it just shows, it she also, like, talks about a nuclear holocaust called Judgment Day, which takes place on August 29th, 1997. And as the opening credits roll, it just, uh, shows, like, the cause of the holocaust. It just shows everything being, like, set ablaze. And, of course, I didn't even mention before that, uh, this film also just, also does have that, uh, great music. Well, piece with the dun -dun 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 -dun, and the, the ending piece so yeah that music piece in this film is great as well yeah and then it gets to 35 years before the uh the war that war where it does show um uh the uh, t-800 model 101 um and sent back in time and then yeah he basically does do the same thing that he did in the first film when he was sent back in time. Yeah, he uh, just attacks some bikers in a nightclub. Up and then, yeah, makes one of them uh, give him, like, his clothes, boots, and motorcycle. And then it was, like, the owner of the nightclub or something was trying to stop him from taking the bike. He did with a rifle. Yeah, the guy just, yeah, he just ended up taking the guy's rifle and then also took his sunglasses and then just rode off and off on the motorcycle. Yeah. And then it also showed then the T-1000 and also arriving, and then he ended up killing a cop and just stealing the cop's clothes and car. So, yeah. And, of course, the T-1000 is a, a advanced prototype made of liquid metal that is, like, known as memetic polyvoy, and he'll... 
And yeah, he also has the ability to shape shift to, to anything it touches, and he can like make his arms into blades, and in, like other shapes. Yeah, and something that I've always wondered about the T one thousand, like I said, he, as he's played by Robert Patrick, but yeah, he does have like the ability to be like liquid metal, and he is like kind of just a very uh, sort of a silver type of a uh, a liquid. And yeah, then what I've been what I've always wondered is like. Like, is, like, the Robert Patrick, looking at Robert Patrick, is that, like, his natural appearance, or is he just, like, normally just, like, the, like, just liquid metal, and he just, like, killed, like, Robert Patrick person, and then he just decided to, like, be that, go with that as his natural look. I mean, it's just something that I've always wondered, because it's something that they never actually do, like, touch upon in this movie if that is like his natural look or if he just like decided to kill that person and just take that appearance as his natural look so yeah it's just something that i've always wondered yeah but then and yeah then uh, the t-1000 then looks up john connor and it shows that uh john is um, is a 10 year old boy and apparently he is in foster care because um is uh Sarah apparently has been like in prison at a mental hospital because she attempted to uh, bomb a computer factory. Now, so John, of course, is in foster care right now, and yeah, he really is not obedient at all to his foster parents, uh, Todd and Janelle. Oh well, yeah, and then, and one day, he, hey, as a uh, the T-1000 was able to track John's address down. He was then talking to the foster parents, and then, and as the uh, foster parents were, gave the T-1000 a picture of John, of course, they presumed him as an actual cop. They then mentioned how there was somebody else looking for him also. Uh, what has, if it had anything to do with it. With it which they were, of course, referring to um the Terminator. Yeah, the T-800 model, yeah. We're for, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger's Terminator, I'll just refer to him as the Terminator, and uh, Robert Patrick, the T-1000, I'll just call him the T-1000. So, yeah, just to uh, clarify things, yeah. I'm going to be calling, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger's Terminator, the Terminator, and Robert Patrick's the T-1000, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, of course, that uh, T-1000 knew who Todd and Janelle were talking about, so, yeah, basically, it was just a race to see which one of them could get to John first. Yeah, and meanwhile, like, it showed that, uh, Sarah was, like, institutionalized in a mental hospital, and, yeah, she was, like, being, uh, examined by, uh, uh, Dr. Silberman, so, yeah, Dr. Silberman is also back in this film, and he's still, uh, played by Earl Bowen, yeah, and he doesn't believe that, uh, the events of Sarah with the Terminator from the first film are true, and he's just, like, trying to convince her that, and it's like those events aren't actually real and they never actually happened. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. And then as John was like in a shopping mall as the uh Terminator and T one thousand were like trying to locate him to get um yeah. Then as the uh John could see like the T one thousand was trying to find him, John then tried to escape. But then yeah the T-1000 gave chase to John, but yeah, the Terminator was also in pursuit as well. And then, when John was, like, ended up being caught between the two of them, um, yeah, the T-1000 then tried to shoot John down, but yeah, the Terminator, her, of course, like, covered her John. And then, as the Terminator was turning off the T-1000, it then, like, gave John an opportunity to try to escape. But then, yeah, as John, like, tried to bail on his a dirt bike... The T-1000 gave chase, and then eventually the T-1000 ended up hijacking a semi-truck uh, and gave chase to John. But yeah, the Terminator was also in pursuit on his motorcycle. And then it spilled to, the chase then spilled into a canal. Hell, oh, and then, yeah, the T-1000 then was just like closing in more on John and was starting to um, rear-end him a couple of times. But then, yeah, the Terminator then was able to catch up to John. And, yeah, he grabbed John and put him on the motorcycle with him. And he was able to uh, shoot one of the tires on the semi out. And then that caused uh, the T-1000 to crash and the truck to explode. Oh, yeah. But then, yeah, then as, after the explosion, then as a, 
Terminator and John were riding off, the T-1000 emerged from the flames, yeah? And then the Terminator then explained to John um, why he was there. He, there. Yeah, the Terminator was explaining to John that he sent him 35 years from then, and and then he was reprogrammed him to be John's protector in that his time. And yeah, and he also explained that the T-1000 is made of, like, liquid metal. Metal, and, and the T-1000 is after John. Yeah, and then after, like, John realized, because he, like, had heard everything that uh, Sarah had said to him, he realized that everything Sarah said was true, and he tried to call home to his foster parents to try to warn them but then yeah as janelle answered the phone john could see that something was wrong because of the way janelle was acting she was being nicer than she was before or yeah and then john and the t-1000 then realized that the t-1000 or yeah the terminator not the t-1000 yeah john and the terminator then like discovered that uh, the t-1000 had killed john's foster parents yeah And then, yeah, then when it, John realized that everything his mom said to him was true, John then, and then when the Terminator also told John that the T-1000 would use Sarah as a way to get John to contact uh, her and uh, have, be able to get to John to kill him. So then John then, like, forced the Terminator to, to help him, him get his mom out of that hospital and because the Terminator has to follow like, all of John's orders, so, yeah. yeah. But then, yeah, Sarah then, like, like attempted to escape from the um, mental hospital as well. She attacked, attacked a bunch of staff members, and the T-1000 also, like, went to the hospital and tried to find Sarah to kill her and pose as her. And then, yeah, he ended up, like, killing off a security guard. All right, after, like... He, and then posed as uh, the security guard because, of course, the security guard uh, touched him. Because, yeah, the T-1000, like I said, can uh, 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 pose as anything that it touches in equal size. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Sarah was trying to escape from the hospital, like I said. And, yeah, she attacked some staff members and she even, like, attacked uh, Dr. Silverman as well. Broke his arm and threatened to poison him. And, yeah. But then, yeah, once, like, the doctors were able to get, um, Sarah away from, uh, Silverman, they then, like, tried to stop her, but, yeah, Sarah that was able, was just, like, was able to avoid them, yeah, she, like, stole the like, keys from one doctor, and then, uh, she, he, like, broke a key off a lock, and then, you know, to buy her some more time to escape, but, yeah, something that's kind of weird about this scene is, like, when Sarah's, like, running from the staff, like, uh, she's, like, in that scene, like, she's barefoot, but, yeah, as she's running, you can, like, hear the sound of, like, heavy boots, like, as she's running, like, what's up with that? Like, she's barefoot, but you can hear the sound of, like, boots as she's running, like, what's up with that? I mean, are her feet just so hard, they sound like boots, so, yeah, kind of weird, but, yeah. But then, yeah, as Tarot then was able to get to the elevator, then the Terminator then uh, emerged from the elevator, and at first, like, Sarah, of course, was frightened, because, has, of course, like, all her memories of the Terminator, but, yeah, then, like, the Terminator then, like, saved her from the staff members that tried to, like, uh, hold her down, and then, yeah, she then just, and then John and the Terminator uh, helped Sarah get out of there, but, yeah, the T-1000 also gave chase, He's, and then, yeah, but, uh, the Terminator, John, and Sarah were able to escape in a police car. Yeah. 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 And then, and later on, the Terminator was then just uh, telling John and Sarah more about uh, Skynet's history. And he was explaining that the one that, the man that was, like, directly responsible for the creation of Skynet was a C Cyberdyne systems engineer, Miles Bennett. Dyson, who was working on a revolutionary neural net processor to form the basis for Skynet. Yeah, yeah. and Sarah's plan and at first was just to gather weapons from um, an old friend of hers and then flee to Mexico with John. But then, as she like, had a um, nightmare about the Judgment Day Holocaust, uh, she then set out to um, kill Miles Dyson to stop the 
stopped uh, Judgment Day from occurring. But then when a mile, uh, when uh, John and the Terminator then discovered what uh, she was doing, and they then gave chase to her. Oh, and I should also say, like, like, like somewhere in here, here, uh, the Terminator was like just using like words like affirmative and stuff, and John was just teaching the Terminator like words that he should actually say to talk. I like I said before, yeah. You just say words like no problemo and hasta la vista, baby. Yeah. And also, at one point, as the Terminator like uh, started a car, he just like broke into the ignition to start it by hand. And then, yeah, uh, John showed the Terminator the car keys that were right in the visor. Yeah. But yeah, anyway. And then Sarah then and was able to track down Miles. Miles, and she was about to shoot him in the head, but uh, Miles got distracted by his son, Danny, and then Sarah missed her shot, but she did end up uh, shooting uh, Miles in, like, the shoulder or something, and then as she was about to kill him, like, it was right in front of Miles' wife and son, she just realized that she really couldn't kill Miles right in front of of his wife and son, and yeah, she just ended up backing off, and then just like, like just uh, clinched down to the ground, and then yeah, John and the Terminator then ended up arriving, and then yeah, John then had the Terminator to show Miles what he really was. Yeah, he just used a knife and then just cut the flesh from his arm, and then revealed the uh, the uh, endoskeleton and arm, arm, and then yeah, then he. The Terminator then just explained and uh, Dyson of the future consequences of the work of Skynet and what it will cause. And then, and yeah, Miles then just felt really ashamed about what that he was about to cause. And yeah, well, at first Miles was just saying that he wasn't going to finish his work. But yeah, Sarah and John and the Terminator knew that others would like follow in his work so then you know, miles revealed that a lot of the research that he's been conducting has been reverse engineering from the remainders of the first terminator that attacked sarah which of course was like the uh, cpu and the right arm arm which wasn't crushed in the hydraulic yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then, so then, the Terminator, Sarah, and John were just then uh, told Miles that all the items that his designs have to be destroyed. So then they broke into the Cyberdome building. Thing, yeah, and then, yeah, they tried to, like, t like uh, restrain a security guard, but another one found the, um, the chaos and that. And, yeah, then he just, uh, then they, like, just, uh, started the uh, silent security system, but, yeah, with, yeah, John was able to, like, hack in to get the keys, and then they were able to retrieve the CPU and the arm, but, yeah, they also, like, ended up uh, setting some explosives to destroy the lab, but, yeah, the police then were called in, and then they, they had, like, a standoff with the, with, uh, the Terminator, or, uh, Sarah and Miles, so, yeah, and then, yeah, the, as they were like setting up the uh, setting up everything, then the police ended up uh, shooting uh, Miles. I wasn't just uh, gunning him down, but then and yeah, the Terminator then was able to just uh, fend off the rest of the police. He used to allow um, the Terminator, John, and Sarah to all like escape, but then yeah, Miles ended up like slowly dying, and then he and he just ended up like rigging up a uh, dead man switch then he ended up like detonating it when he died yeah and then yeah the t-1000 ended up arriving on the scene as well and then of course he like gave chase to the terminator uh john and sarah and then he like hijacked a police chopper to chase them down and as they uh, uh john the terminator and sarah were like fleeing in a police type of van and yeah and yeah sarah was like trying to um fire off at the terminator but the oh well, the t-1000 rather yeah the t-1000 fired off at sarah as well and then yeah sarah ended up getting a uh, shot in the leg like, but yeah then the terminator then just 
slammed on the brakes and had the chopper ended up just crashing into the van, but the van ended up flipping over as well. And then the T-1000 uh, T ended up hijacking a liquid nitrogen truck and continued the chase. And, and uh, the Terminator, John, and Sarah ended up uh, taking another truck and tried to flee some more. But yeah, it really like wasn't that fast. And the T-1000 and kept ramming them. But yeah, the Terminator then was able to just uh, shoot the uh, T-1000 down long enough to cause him to lose control of the truck and ended up falling over and then yeah they ended up then just uh uh, ra uh crashing into a steel mill as well and then yeah the t1000 ended up getting frozen by all the leaking uh liquid nitrogen and then yeah the terminator then pulled out a handgun and of course said hasta la vista baby and then shot the t1000 and down yeah and shattered him but then, yeah, as the pieces were all then melting, the T-1000 then, like, reformed himself. Health and continued to give chase to the Terminator, John, and Sarah inside of the steel mill. Yeah. And then as the Terminator was then, like, just trying to uh, fend off the T-1000 long enough to get uh, John and Sarah have time to run away faster and further away yeah the t-1000 and the terminator ended up fighting it out and then yeah the t-1000 was like overpowering the terminator a lot and yeah it was using a lot of mechanisms in the steel mill to just uh, damage the terminator and yeah at one point yeah the terminator his arm was like caught under a mechanical wheel of some kind and yeah and the terminator had to just uh, break his arm off off to continue fighting and then at one point the t-1000 ended up uh attacking sarah as she was separated from john he used like one of the knives in his fingers and just uh pierced right through sarah's shoulder trying to get her to call to john and he was threatening to uh, pierce through her head also oh oh but yeah then the terminator him or fought back at the T-1000 some more, and then, yeah, then the T-1000 just ended up a, a jamming a steel rod right through the Terminator, supposedly uh, uh, destroying him. But then, yeah, then the T-1000, uh, the Terminator then used alternate power to come back online, and then, yeah, the T-1000 then tried to pose as Sarah to, to get to John, but yeah, then the real Sarah then, and ended up just uh, shooting the T-1000 down some more, or to try to lure him, him, him back into a vat of molten steel, but she ran out of ammo before she could get him to fall in. But then, yeah, then the Terminator then used a M79 grenade launcher, <laughs> launcher and shot at the T-1000, then the grenade just ended up exploding, and then that just damaged the T-1000 so much that then he ended up just falling into the vat. That and ended up being destroyed. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, the Terminator then just told John to toss the arm and the CPU from the original Terminator into the vat as well, which they did. And with everything seemingly being over, the Terminator then just said to Sarah that there was one more chip, which of course was him, and that he has to be destroyed as well to prevent any reverse engineering being, being done on him. But he said that he couldn't self-terminate, so he told Sarah that she would have to lure him into the steel. Oh, but yeah, and of course, like, John didn't want the Terminator to go like that. He tried to beg the Terminator to not do it, and he even, like, tried to say that he ordered him not to go. But yeah, but then, yeah, I, and I forgot to say, like, the Terminator was also asking earlier on in the film, like, why they cry, because, yeah, John was tearing up at one point in the film, and the Terminator was asking why they cry, and then John was crying again, right, at this moment, and then the Terminator then just said he now knows why they cry, and it's some, but it's something that he can never do. And so then, yeah, the Terminator then, like, uh, embraced John with a hug, and then, and embraced Sarah, and then, yeah, he then just, like, said goodbye as he was holding onto a chain and then was just slowly lowered down into the vat and as he was like almost like completely in the vat bef at, right before his hand went in and yeah he just gave a thumbs up before he was in completely yeah and then it just had john and sarah just hugging and then 
it then just ended by showing just moving down a highway. Okay, and it just has Sarah like like narrating again. The unknown future rolls toward us. I face it for the first time with a sense of hope. Because if a machine, a terminator, can learn the value of human life, maybe we can too. And then that's how it ended. So, yeah, like I said, just an absolutely phenomenal film. I mean, it, it really is one of my favorite films of all time, and it is, like, hands down my favorite Terminator movie, and I really do say it is the best of the series. So, yeah, it, just like I said with the first Terminator, I would recommend it, but, I mean, let's face it, you've all, all already seen it. You know, so, yeah, it is just an absolute classic. So, yeah, so what can I really say about it? Like I said, a solid four stars out of four. All right, so I guess that's all I can really say about it. So, yeah. So, I guess that's all for my review of Terminator 2 Judgment Day. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.